Hello and good afternoon and welcome to Speaking the Truth About Money. My name is Martin Coward. I am a spiritual teacher, prosperity and mindset coach working with gay, transgender and bisexual business leaders to help them grow and build their businesses and love themselves and make money doing what we love. And this podcast, this show is about looking at how we think and see money. All of us, all of us have some limiting beliefs, some challenges about our understanding of money because we were all traumatized at some point in our childhood. So this show is about having sharing those stories of how we have been pulled into those false narratives about money and how they've impacted our lives, and how with a little bit of courage, we can challenge those false narratives with the truth of who we are and why we're here, knowing we have everything we need within ourselves, including money, to have wonderful, joyful, and prosperity in our lives. Today, I am so excited to have as my guest, Dr. Steve, the Gay Leadership Dude. He has recently published a new book called Pride Leadership, and we're going to get into that in just a few minutes, particularly around the chapter that I love the most, around courage. And for, for now, I want to know from you, and welcome, Dr. Steve, I want to just know from you, and I want to give you a few minutes to share, how did you become <laughs> Dr. Steve the Gay leadership. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. Happy to be here. Um, you know, well, I mean, I've always figured out my authentic self since my early 20s, but it wasn't until um, about 2018 when I decided to kind of uh, coin that phrase, the gay leadership dude, and announce, you know, circle R for all my, my legal friends out there. So I'm the only one, at least legally here in the States, who can use that. <laughs> um, and it was actually because of my publisher, uh, Jen Grace. She's actually um, in the greater New York area. Publisher. I know Friday. Jen. Yeah. She works with me too. I, she, everybody loves Everybody she's knows Jen. Everybody knows Jen. Oh my she's God. Great. If you're gay and in the publishing world or not, game she is the one you need to talk to yes i love her she's awesome well, she's not just a great publisher but she's also a fantastic marketer and as we were going down the path of, of getting pride leadership off the ground you know one point or earlier in the conversation she's like what's your personal brand i'm like what i top dog learning group that's my business she's like no no, no. your brand i'm like i don't really have one she's like you need one i'm like Okay, so I kind of noodled on it for a while and came up with the gay leadership dude because uh, you immediately know three three things about me that I'm gay, <laughs> that I self identify as a dude, and uh, that I like leadership. And so the nice thing is, not only does it fit with the book and the keynotes and all that stuff, but just in regular business, you know, when I use my business title, owner and principal, top dog learning group, and the gay leadership dude, I don't have to do the coming out thing anymore, which is just so refreshing because it's just kind of out there on my business uh -huh. card. <laughs> it's like there's no question, right? Pretty obvious. <laughs> you, know, you know, you really don't even have to put the he, him, his on there anymore like the rest of us do because it's all right there. You are a dude yeah. and you're gay and you're in leadership. It's all <laughs> you're also a doctor. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Where'd you get your doctor? Where'd you get your doctorate in? Uh, my doctorate is actually a doctor of education, specifically in uh, instructional technology and distance education. So I was doing distance learning before it was cool in a pandemic. Wow, that's cool. That's yeah. really cool. Well, I want to just tell you how much I enjoyed reading your book. Uh, I didn't read all of it, but the chapter I really grabbed my attention was the one on courage. And because I love courage. Courage to me is that gateway from the lower levels of consciousness of fear and doubt and the ego thinking mind shadow. We have to have courage in order to transcend those limitations into mm -hmm. a higher level of consciousness of love and joy and abundance and all those kinds of things. So it's, 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 it is a particularly skill that I think we all need to, to develop. And uh, it and, and and so I want to I want to I want to hear a little bit more about from your perspective about courage. And then I want to dive into a little. I wanted to hear your general thoughts about courage, and then I want to talk about it in, in in specifically in relationship to four, the four critical skills that I think every leader needs to to hone and cultivate to be a really good leader. And I think they need courage in at least three out of four of those. So what, just give me give us an overview of. Of, of how courage plays such an important role in leadership, just 
raw and unfiltered from your perspective? Yeah, I, I think, you know, I've been playing around with, with leadership and, and being in the leadership coaching space and training and all that stuff for pretty much my whole career. And you know, over over those three years, you see a lot of, uh, no, I'm 25, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm trying to, trying to cut my age. No, uh, but over the, over the course of the, you know, 25 plus years, you see leaders who are just, just rocking and rolling and you see ones who are crashing and burning. And, and one of the big traits that keeps bubbling up for those who are really doing a great job with leadership and being effective is having that courage. And it's not like the, you know, Wonder Woman, Harry Potter kind of like mentality of courage. And, you know, it, it's it's those subtle things that leaders do in a courageous way on a day in and day out. It's things having like those hard conversations with that, that team member, that individual to be like, you know what, here's some feedback that really you need to change. Or it's having that conversation with that boss or that supervisor, even if it's just talking about your authentic self. But all these little tiny pieces and parts are courageous acts that can be channeled to just be a more effective leader if we're aware of it and doing it in the right way. Yeah, I, I that, that's beautifully. Well, I love the way you put all that up. And I just want to say to anybody watching, anybody, we, we want this to be as active and as engaging as possible. If you'd like to, uh, you can certainly write into the chat and say hello. Let us know where you're coming from. You can tell us, ask us any questions, and we'll be glad to. And it will be glad to answer it. Also, I know that more people watch the replay than watch the live because that's just what it is. And if you put if you'll put hashtag replay into the comment section, uh, I will come back and, re and answer your questions later. And I don't know. Maybe we can get Steve to come back and answer them, too. But we want we want the live version of this and the replay to be just as powerful as as, as each other. So please just put your comments, ask your questions and uh, engage with us the best either from here now where we're going live or later when we're in the reply, but I want to, I want to come back to that. I want to come back to that courage question. Mm -hmm. I teach in what I, in, in all of my coaching programs, I, there are four critical skills that I think every leader needs to, to hone ma and master throughout their leadership. And I don't care that if you're a leader in your house and your family or your business, I agree. these are the four skills that every leader needs to master. Um, Trust and transparency. You got to be able to tell the truth, even when it's uncomfortable. Empathy, mm -hmm. compassion, and competency. Now, of those four, competency is the one I think most professionals get. I mean, they know that they've got to always. If you're if you're a surgeon, you've got to always be working on your level of skill as a surgeon. So that's not, and that is, and that's not a real that that harder skill is more cognitive. It does. I don't know that it creates a lot of courage. Maybe in the beginning when you're learning the trade, but it's not something that requires a lot of courage. But the other two, being able to tell the truth when it's uncomfortable, like you just mentioned it with, with that, with, with your with somebody working for you, you got to have what I call compassionate truth. Yep. And then there's empathy, which I think is very important. And we're seeing that today in, in our new president, which I love. And compassion, being able to express compassion for others. I'd like to hear your comments on courage and why we why courage is so important in practicing and honing and mastering those three critical skills as a leader. Well, it, it, it's funny, Martin, and, and we've had this conversation a little bit before. Is you know, for for what I talk about in pride leadership and the six competencies, one of the six courage being one of them is empathy. <laughs> and, and I often talk about, you know, I, I, I've looked at the six competencies that I have personally seen really help a leader propel them to that next level. And, and they're, they're not these little silos. Um, you know, I, yes, I treat them as chapters, but they're just this big, gorgeous, entwined ball of thread. And, and so you can't be a courageous leader without having empathy in my perspective as well. You can't be a courageous leader and not be authentic. Um, you know, and I, and I think about our community, it's, it, you know, only about what HRC's latest is 50, 50% of queer people are actually out at work which still astounds me, but obviously some people have their reasons and that's totally cool, but 50% are not bringing their authentic selves, are not having the courage to bring their authentic selves at work. And, and, and I think I'd love that number to be different um, and, and look at the way that we can bring that authenticity to the forefront and have empathy for those who don't, obviously, but but really think about what, what can we do to pull in that courage to show that empathetic self, that authentic self within the workspace and beyond. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. And the thing, and I, I didn't realize that number was so large, but, you know, I live in a metropolitan area. I live in New York City. So it's, I mean, I, I, I when I was hired years ago away from one 
top financial institution to another financial. It was like because I was gay and they wanted me to because I was a, a leader in the gay community. I was at the time I think I was the the the, the, the one of the co chairs of the speaking of HRC. I was the co chair one year of the human rights campaign gala here in New York. And so, and I was ready out there. And as a matter of fact, I left one company because they were, so, they were rated low on the human mm. uh, on the HRC index and yep. the company I went to work for, which was the time met life was rated 100 in, but, but they didn't really have a presence in the community. They didn't have a real person out there selling their products, you know, and, and representing them. And so they, they, they really, they, they, they courted me for quite a while and paid me some money to come work with them. But that's New York City. And I don't think that works so well from in your, if you're in my hometown of Albany, Georgia. Right. <laughs> so, uh, but so I want to go. So what I want to talk about, the reason that number is low, it's probably because one, people are afraid to come out and there's probably good reason. But I know that I was, I, I got, I got beaten up and ridiculed in South Georgia and, I don't know that there's the people who are in somewhat positions of power in Southwest Georgia are not all that open to gay people. Yeah. So I, you you say in there about you, we, in our in our tagline it says all leaders can can be consciously inclusive. Mm -hmm. I want to really zero down on what those leaders are in areas like Southwest Georgia. Yeah. And I don't want to pick on that, but, but it's just, it's just a reality. Okay. And there's, I mean, there are places around the country where gay people are still made to feel less than are still made to feel. Sure. And that's why they don't want to come out at work because it's just not safe. Yeah. But there is something both sides of that equation are missing. And that's what I want you to talk a little bit about, if you would, about what is the advantage? What would what would those companies in South Georgia pick up? How would they be more uh, what would they get from being more inclusive and being, making it a safe environment for gay people to come out? Well, what I think is really fascinating in this time that we're in is is really the push for inclusivity, and and it's been bubbling. And then you had you know the big kind of pot boiling over last summer with uh, Black Lives Matter and George Floyd. And and when I talk about being consciously inclusive, yes, it's for the LGBTQ plus folks, but it's really just really being a good ally. Period. And 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 you know it's it's not rocket science. It's not new stuff. But it's just a different way to think about it. And how do we collectively create a safe space for all of us bunny ears other um, who are out there, whether that be a queer person, be a queer black person, a queer uh, person with different, differing abilities, whatever. And, and so I think we all have an awesome obligation to think about how are we creating a space that's inclusive for us all. Um, and, and so that's that's little things and that's big things. It's little things like, you know, you have your pronouns there. Mine's, my, my title's too long that you can't see mine, but they're there, believe it or not. Um, but, you know, but you know, that's that's a small thing, but that's a big deal for our trans brothers and sisters and other folks. That's like a little, little shiny um, you know, pride flag that says, hey, I'm inclusive, that's cool. Uh, it, you know, it's looking at things like um, you're in the marketing department of, of a workplace, big or small, doesn't matter. And being really mindful of the images that you're selecting to make sure they are representative of the broader population. You know, I can't tell you how many times I go to a client site and they have pictures on the wall and um, especially like I think about this one client I have who's a global manufacturer went in and to do a consciously inclusive leadership workshop, you know, pre COVID and um, four images on the wall, all were what appeared to be middle age white dudes uh, in, in the manufacturing space. It's like, is that representative of your culture? Is that what you want to show as, as your inclusivity? So it's bigger, small things, but we all have an opportunity to be that advocate for every other, to create that safe space, that inclusive space. And I think that's, that's all of our, our ownership, whether you're in the queer community or not. Yeah, I agree. But I think, I think there's even a bigger, a bigger thing that these corporations are missing out on. And that's our creative queer genius. Tell me more about that. That is what they're missing out on. I mean, let's look, let's look at and let's look at what you just said in the marketing department. If you've got someone who is in the marketing department who's gay, and you're in a an environment that is not completely open to gay people, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, I've, you and I have both been in environments where almost people are hostile to gay people. They make unkind comments. They make jokes, particularly about transgender people. Mm -hmm. But you've got this extremely talented, let's just call it a trans man working in your marketing department. And you don't have a 
an environment that's conclu- inclusive. Yeah. They're afraid. How much value are you going to, are you leaving on the table from that employee? And, and I would add to that, Martin, in, in what we've just proven over the past 18 months or so is that for certain roles, like a marketing role, I don't have to live there. I can now work remotely because it's so much more accepted. Yeah, but it's not about, it's not about where I live. It's, it, 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 it's, it's a mindset. I don't care if I'm in my house or if I'm in their office. If I don't feel comfortable, if I don't feel appreciated, love for being a gay man in their marketing department, I am not going to, I'm not, I'm not going to be in a place where I'm going to tap into that creative genius in me because I'm afraid. Well, and that's, that's what I was, that's the point I was making. Actually, it talked about this in, Chapter seven, when, when it's shaping culture and pride leadership, because, you know, we all have to make those choices uh, when we're, you know, that other and we'll just kind of keep it to our community for now, but it applies much more broadly. And so you're right that 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 um, trans man who's in the marketing area isn't going to bring his full authentic self, his creative self, his powerful self to work on the opposite side of the workplace, yeah, you're, you're missing out on, on the best that this person can perform. But, but the new thing is, and this is the point I was trying to make is, you know, that, that, that man has an opportunity to be like, well, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have to be here because it's the only game in town. Now the game in town is wherever your digital. Exactly. Now they're losing out on two ways. One, if they're not going to make it, make me feel good because I live in Albany, Georgia, which is where I grew up. Yeah. Screw you. I'm going to go work for a company out of New York who's going to see my value and see my potential. Absolutely. And I'm going to take all my creative genius to another place, another part of the world where I can be appreciated. Yep. And I can excel and I can grow in my in my authentic self. Beautiful answer. I love that because you're right. There, there one, we don't have to be, we're not, we, we don't have to stay glued to I our know. local environment anymore. So the the company that's it's not being open to being inclusive is missing out on just the employee employee. Yeah. But even if you've got an employee and you're missing out because you're not, you're not getting the value of their, their full creative genius. Yep. So everybody loses out on that fear driven mindset yeah. on that. And it's all fear driven. It's not, you know, we don't, we don't learn. I, I live in this wonderful neighborhood in New Jersey where it's, 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 it's a suburb and it is so diverse. I mean, my neighbors are, are straight couple with, with put out nature, put out a flag every year during pride. I mean, they, we've got mixed racial couples. We've got gay, black man, white man, kids. I mean, it is everything. And it makes such a wonderful place sure. to live. It's the fabric is just wonderful to sit. I can sit in my, where I am right now, look out all over the neighborhood. I'm on the kind of the corner of my house and I watch the neighbors and the kids and everybody interplaying. They, they don't even think, Oh, you're a black person or my parents right. are, are gay. They're just people having a good time, enjoying life. And that's what people are missing out on. They're missing out on the richness and the fat of the richness of our diversity. Mm-hmm. It, that's what that's what's costing people. Well, and, I mean, and, and businesses have known this is a thing for years. Uh, you know, it's it's employee retention and it's recruitment. And and so you know, good talent, the right, the best talent is you know looking before they even walk through the door. How inclusive are you? Uh, you know, what's on your website? What do you do? And and it's not just the, oh, we put a statement out during Black Lives Matter. It's it, or we change our logo to a pretty rainbow during the month of June. It's more than that. And, a lot and, and more than that. A, a, absolutely. But you know, a lot of organizations or some or many organizations say a lot, but many organizations think that's enough. And you know, as queer people, we're savvy enough. We know how to look for the, the those safe spaces that are there. You know, do we see pronouns in the emails from the reply from our HR friends that we just are looking for potentially working there? You know, we're looking for that stuff. And then once you're inside the space, what are the other things you're looking for? Where's that queer representation up at that senior level, that C-suite or, or, or the upper management or on the board of directors? Uh, what are they doing beyond June to promote inclusivity within the work? place, not just for queer folks, but beyond. And I think, you know, businesses are starting to get smarter, or at least the smart businesses are starting to get smarter to really start to think about, okay, I can't just do this in June. I need, if I'm going to be inclusive for yeah. folks, yeah. Yeah. what's that look like? 
Yeah, and I'll go back to my story about this big firm hiring me away to come work for them. And if, and if I look back on that now, it was it was really, um, it, I felt I felt a little bit like I was being pimped a little bit. Yeah, totally. You know? I mean, I was like they 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 didn't really. It wasn't because they really wanted to get to know me as a gay person. They wanted me to market to our community. Yeah. And I'll give you an example of, of where of where this came up. I remember sending a very simple picture of me at like a pride event. Like it was a big gay expo. I was at a big pride, business gay pride expo. It was, it was an expo for gay people, businesses in New York. And I just sent a couple of pictures of me with all these people, gay people, celebrating and doing doing business. You know, it was a really nice business. It was a great event. It was us having a good time with each other. And I sent that to the guy, I, to the managing director. So this is what we're doing today. He said, why are you sending me pictures like this? I find them offensive. Oh, my gosh. And I thought to myself, what? You send me pictures of you doing things with your family all the time. These are, there's yeah. nothing offensive here. But it was like, oh, and it completely changed. And, and after that, my whole relationship changed. I didn't trust this guy anymore. Yeah. But then I felt like, like you say, it was like, yeah, we want we want gay people here because we want to we want to look good to the world. We want to bring them in. We want to check that box. But do we want to really include them in our lives, and um, and, and and be and be really part of something? Yeah. And the answer was no. And that and 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 it turned out that while that. I actually left a company that was much more inclusive, even though the, on the larger, they didn't have that good of a rating on the, that was at the, but at the local level in the firm I worked for, they were much more people first inclusive. And I wasn't the only person that was there that was gay or anything else, but it was, but at the, it's, it's the environment that's so important. It's the, you, we know, we know intuitively if someone cares about us, really yeah. cares about us. As human beings, well, you know, it's that whole Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and if if you're not familiar with that, it's it's you know, psychologists Maslow said, hey, you know, let's go ahead and and organize what humans need to be you know, not just survive but thrive. But at the bottom is you know, physiological needs, you know, water, air, all that kind of fun stuff. But the next layer up is safety, and you know, workplace safety is part of that. You know, job security is part of that, and and at the pinnacle of Maslow's hierarchy is what's called self actualization, basically being the best human you can be. You can never get there if you're in your workplace concerned that, oh, am I going to get fired tomorrow because I'm gay or I'm a lesbian or a trans person or whatever. And so, so you know, smart workplaces are figuring that out or, or are embracing that. But at the same time, especially, and, and I hate to, hate to generalize about the younger generation, but you see people who have been more um, out in their authentic selves for much longer period of time so that when they are in the workplace, when they are in that that professional setting, you know, it's it's a ticking clock. And they're like, okay, I'm watching to see how inclusive you are. Oh, you're not, see, I'm out of here. And they take their toys and go elsewhere. And I think that's the challenge that we're facing is, is that, um, organizations are, are, are really, if they truly want to be inclusive, they need to get their stuff together if they have it. Right. Because if they only have a certain finite window or else people are not not just going to take off and you know, retention's an issue, but then they get dinged on Yelp. They get dinged on social media and, and then they're, they're doing that mea culpa PR thing. And then that only erodes their inclusivity of a brand going forward. Uh, you're, yeah, I, I, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is great. So let me ask you this question. Let's just say that you're, you've got a company and you're straight I do. and you, and, and you, and you're, 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 you're a straight leader and you're in and out. And you don't even know what, you don't even know what an ally is, but you want to, you, you, they're hearing this podcast, uh, this, this broadcast and they're, it's, it's something's resonating. They're understanding it. And they say, you know, maybe we should, we, we, maybe we should look at, and let's just stick with the LGBT community because that's what we know. We can, we, 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 so let's just talk about what they could do and the advantages. Boy, I don't, we maybe have spoken about it so far of them actually taking some steps. What are the next steps they can take to not just have a surface cover of I'm, I'm inclusive of the gay community, uh -huh. but to really embrace our 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 tribes so they get the value of our creative genius 
Yeah, it, it, it's a great question. And um, it's chapter three in my book. <laughs> no, but in all sincerity, it's actually one of the big things I do a lot of like keynotes and speaking on, because because really, if we think about how we foster inclusive leader, inclusive leadership, um, it, it, it's three steps. It's think in, speak up and act out. And so the think in part is you. As, as a human, as a leader, as a business owner, as a straight wannabe ally, what potential uh, unconscious biases do you have toward the queer community? You know, do you uh, see two men kissing and say, ooh, or do you get an email that says, oh, I don't want to see those types of people like you just talked about? You know, that's kind of the first check in because you can't right. really be a conscious, inclusive leader if you you got stuff you need to do within your own house. So there's that first step. Then uh, so it's, it's that's the, the thinking. Speak up. Is, is the immediate, immediate group around you. And so I think the biggest thing uh, that I, I teach my, my leaders on is not engaging in silent collusion. If you're not familiar with that term, um, silent collusion is like you're in that that moment, You're and, and here's a cr quick true story. Um, I was in Atlanta at a client site several years ago, and we were kind of doing this last, yay, we're done this project, woohoo, as myself and one of my top doggers, which is what I call my consultants, Lori, Lori was next to me, and um, we're just about to start the meeting. It's like me and her and like 38 other you know client people. And at the head of the table is the, the senior executive male, and that's important to the story. And just as we're about to say something, you hear him say, well, you know how women drive. And everyone just kind of stopped, kind of looked, but no one said a word. And at, at that exact moment in time, we were all engaging in silent collusion. We were, we were tacitly approving that stupid statement by not refuting it. And I've seen way too many leaders, business leaders and otherwise, who are totally heart-centered and want to be the best ally they can engage in silent collusion and totally erode their own credibility. And so we're getting back to the courage conversation we just, we were having earlier. You know, it's having that courage to say, Bob, we'll pretend the executive's name is Bob. So Bob, what did you mean by that statement that uh, you know how women drive? Or it's, you know, maybe you're not, don't have that much courage to address Bob at that moment, especially being like five levels up above you, but it might be something that lets people know that you're not on board with it. So you just say something like, whoa, and so you're sending these signals that I'm not on board. And I created this little, and we can put it in the, the notes. Um, it's a free little little tiny training vignette. Called, um, it's about MOPSAM, M-O-P-S-A-M. It's the six ways you can beat silent collusion. But that's kind of the, the um, uh, speak up. And then act out is, to your point, the bigger organization. What are my policies like when it comes to same-sex couples, um, adoption policies, uh, trans health benefits? Um, what is the communication policy for those pronouns and where we're placing those in our Zoom or wherever? And so you kind of start with yourself and work your way out in order to foster a truly inclusive workplace for everybody. Yeah, I love that. And I, I agree. And in, in all the coaching I do, and particularly like even in our relationship with money, we've got to start with our own relationship with money. We've got to start with our own relationship with people we don't know and understand. Yep. We've got to look at our own racism. I have to look at my own racism. Yeah. I have to look at my own homophobia. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I have to look at my own biases towards straight people and particularly straight white men um, because those are the ones that bullied me. So I've got to do my work as well to be able to show up at the table and say, I've done my inner work. Yeah. So I think that's the first thing that you, that I think before anything else can happen, you know, you've got to, it's got to come from your authentic self. And if your authentic self right now has some biases in it, because that's how you were raised. We understand that. Uh, I mean, I, for me, this, like for me, I mean, I can't help but say that there was a part of me growing up in Southwest Georgia that doesn't have some biases toward black people because that was the way I was raised mm -hmm. and I have to say okay what is that inside me that I need to let go of and I need to question so that I can see that's just a lie there is no such thing as a superior person to another one that's just ridiculous but growing up in my environment I understand what that how that how I was taught that as a child so I've got to go in and kind of unframe that I got to go reframe that and question that truth sure. to get to the truth and do that, do my own inner work in order before I can become someone who can be an ally to black people. Well, and, you know, yeah. And debiasing ourselves is the term I use for that. And, and, and it's true. And it's, it takes having that self-awareness is absolutely the first step. I know for me personally, um, you know, it, it was, it was a while till I could use the word queer, um, you know, cause that's what I was called in a really not so cool way. Yeah, <laughs> 
and and but then you have have people who uh, younger younger folks who are like, no, I just identify as queer, and and so it's taken me a bit of time to embrace that, and now it's like, oh yeah, it's so much easier to say that than LGBTQ plus, you know, and and I, I love all of our our letters and stuff, but it's just a gorgeous shortcut. So it took me. I a, agree with. I want to tell you, I agree with that. And you know what? I don't know any any one of those of us in those categories that today can't you wouldn't wouldn't embrace that term i can certainly embrace it totally agree. and it's a lot easier than and people understand it and it, it gives us our power back so i'm a big believer totally i'm agree. a big believer i wish we would just go in and we would just claim that as we're, <laughs> we're queer people and we're happy and it includes all the letters yeah. of the rainbow yeah. there. That would be much more way good. and i can't believe that we have gone up to an 30 minutes in our conversation and I knew we would go through this. Effectively. I just, I love what you have to say and it resonates with me so much. And I hope the audience gets something from it. I know they will. Um, and, and particularly those, those leaders in the world who need to learn how, what they're missing out on, what is costing them and their companies, by not doing those three things, one in the internal work and the external work to break it, to make more inclusive workplaces and make environments where they're really getting our true talent. So how do people get in touch with you? And uh, if they want to get, they want to get to know more, they want to, of course, your book is there. Which is <laughs> right, right. Uh, so it's e the easiest place to go is um, uh, topdoglearning.biz, B-I-Z. Um, you can find more about me, about my team, some of the work that we do. There's the free uh, online stuff like the mop sam we talked about. We're actually still doing a free plus shipping for um, Pride Leadership. So the U.S. addresses only, sadly. Um, but you can go, um, if you go uh, on that site, you'll see at the top says, you know, books. Um, and we're doing free plus shipping. You just cover the shipping and handling. And then we'll, we'll shoot that out to you. And I even will, will say a little hello uh, in the back cover as well. Well, it's a great book, and I, I I've been enjoying it. And as a as a as a leader in in the community, and I appreciate you putting all the effort you did in this book, and all that you do for our community to 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 foster more uh, inclusive workplace environments. It's very important work that we do. So hold one second. I just want to close this out, okay. and I want to let the audience know that if you want to get in touch with me, one place to go is to my personal Facebook group, Martin Coward. But also, I have two I have two groups. I have one. It's called the Financial Mystic Sanctuary that's open for everyone to join, to, to, to follow me and learn some of the things. And I have all kind of cool stuff in there. But I also have another group that's specifically for my tribe. And that's gay, bi and transgender men, business leaders. And that's on Facebook. And you can just simply I'd love to have you join it. If that's you. The, whole, the, the purpose of that particular Facebook group is to create an online sanctuary, a safe sanctuary for business GBTQ business leaders to truly love and support each other and work on those, our own inner demons, our own inner shadows in a safe environment of love and support. So if that's you. Please join us over there in that Facebook group. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining us today. May love and prosperity prevail. Thank you for joining us.